you know what's so crazy? Like I have all these stories of working in a hospital, and one that stands out to me is we had this lady come down after being in the hospital to pick up her subscription, and when we told her the the cost, she literally had a breakdown. She literally had a nervous breakdown right there, and I'm I'm asking like, what is going on? We couldn't even get her under control, but when she finally came to, she was like, I can't afford this, and I'm going to die. Okay, and so it lets you know what people are going through on a daily basis. And, and just think about this: I'm not, a, I'm not going to afford this. I can, I'm going to die. I'm not going to afford this, and I'm in so much pain. Mm, yeah. But the list goes on and on and on. So it tells you the kind of stress that medical debt can put on someone. And medical debt is the leading debt for all Americans now. Mm-hmm. It's the leading cause of bankruptcy. Think about that. Not your foreclosure on a home. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> medical debt. No, no, no. Medical debt, my friend. Want to know why? This is the sickest nation in the world. Mm. This is the sickest nation in the world. It's profit this, to sick people. Despite the fact that we have more technology. More money. And more money. And we have more medications that we give out in any other place in the world. This is the sickest nation in the world. Okay, so you have to understand, like, there's a lot of things you think are true that is not true. So it's really important when you start to think about and I always say this, like when I'm talking to my uh, students, when I'm coaching in my uh, program, is that it's expensive to be poor. Mm -hmm. Think about the overdraft fees. I used to live in like historic College Park, bought a house in Brookhaven here. By simply changing my zip code, my car insurance w- premium went down by $2,200 per year. Jeez. First of all, what car are you driving? <laughs> uh, Tesla. Uh, Tesla S, yeah. So, like, imagine, imagine, that's just one thing, overdraft fees. You know, credit, when you don't, when you're poor, you have worse credit. 23% interest on all credit cards. It's, compounding. And so I equate that to like also medical debt, but too, because when you're sick, you got diabetes, on average it costs about seventeen thousand dollars to be diabetic. Okay? Wow. All right. If you are a cancer patient, that could be upwards of a hundred thousand dollars. They got medications, like one medication could be a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Okay? It's expensive to be sick. Your insurance premium is going to be higher. Not only is it going to be higher, but even when you go to get insurance, you know what they're going to do? Take your blood pressure. Is it high? Because we're going to make it higher. That price it, range with the the price goes up with the pressure. Yeah. Sheesh. Yeah. Even, so with yeah. even with your weight. Yeah. Even with your weight. They're checking for everything to charge you more. And so, and then you got to understand the opportunity cost that goes along with that too. When you're investing that way in your health instead of investing in your financial future. Think about the what you could have did with that $16,000 as a diabetic. You understand? Think about that $100,000 that you're paying to keep yourself alive with cancer. What could you have done with that? And so this is why I'm always telling people when it, when it, when it comes to your health, like health is truly your wealth. Like, nice. like, you literally could get healthy and start thinking different. I promise you, like, once I got healthy, I started thinking different about everything. So, mm, I like that. I like that. Well, on our on our podcast, since, you know, we're we're here to serve aspiring melanin millionaires, right? Yeah. We always like to ask our guests, what does being a melanin millionaire mean to you? You know, it's so funny. You know, like, I've been so, like, uncomfortable with, like, talking about my wealth. Mm-hmm. And, I, I, you know, I had a conversation with a friend. This is why it's so important to, like, you, as you go up, your, your circle is going to change. Yeah, and you know what we do? We try to bring our circle up with us. Because mm-hmm. we've been taught to do that. But everybody can't come on the bus. Mm-hmm. There are stops that people need to get off. Woo! Say that thing. And some of them, you're going to have to ask people to exit. Some of them, people are going to get off. Mm-hmm. Some of them, people are going to try, try to sabotage the mission. And so when I think about that question, 
I'll tell you, like, there's no way I thought me becoming a millionaire was possible, like, growing up. Like, not even, like, a fraction of it. But I knew I had greatness in me. Mm -hmm. And so, for me, what it means is, is that I flipped the coin on what my destiny was. Like, I had a trajectory that was pipelining me to the prison system. I had a trajectory that was, I, I mean, I'll give you a little something. In eighth grade, they put me in the educationally retarded class. Mm. Eighth grade, here's why. In seventh grade, I watched another friend kill a friend, okay? I had my cousin killed. I had three other friends uh, rob somebody, kill a whole family. I went through all of that in seventh grade. So by the time I got to eighth grade, I had so many emotional problems and I was acting out. And so it wasn't even because of my grades. They put me in that class because of my my behavior. So they were pipelining me to the prison system. So when I say they were pipelining, I was on my way. And so when I hear that, what I say to myself is that I remember a teacher, you know, that year, here's how I got out of that class, because this is important. When I was in the class, I'm in eighth grade, and the teacher asked one of the students to read one of the problems, and it was like, if Sally has four C-cells and Jenny has <laughs> six, how many C-cells do they have if they lose two? And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like... I'm sitting there listening for about five minutes and I'm trying to compute what's going on. Yeah. And in my mind, I said, and, and, and forgive me for my language. Am I in the retarded class? I'm asking myself this because I'm like, as a kid, I'm thinking to myself, like, how did I end up here? Yeah. And so in my mind, I'm like, I'm in the wrong place. Sometimes you're in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And you need to know you're in the wrong place. And the first thing I did was I, I raised my hand. And I asked the teacher, I said, is this a retarded class? <laughs> <laughs> and I asked her seriously. And she says, please don't interrupt class again. So I'm trying to sit there and think about another way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have the language. Yeah. Yeah. So I stood up and I said, ma'am, listen, I'm not supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to say I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah. And she said, if you keep disrupting class, I'm going to send you to the office. I said, I'm just going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the office, told the principal, I said, I'm in the wrong class. He looked at the class and was like, no, you're in the right class. What's up, guys? Congratulations on joining Team Black Well. But we'd be remiss if we didn't give you a uniform as an official player on the team. So head over to shop.melaninmoney.com and grab your official uniform for Well Builders of Color. We'll see you all in practice. I said, you think I'm in the wrong, right class. I said, I made all A's and B's last year. There's no way I'm supposed to be in here. He said, you're in the right class. I said, I'm not going back. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're going to try to send you back. It's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. good. I said, what, how do I need to get out of this class? Because I'm never going back. He said, well, your mom got to sign you out after about 30 minutes of conversating with him. I called my mom up there. She finally comes. Now, you have to understand, my mom didn't graduate from high school. So when the, the principal told her, well, he's a smart kid. He's going to make an A and then he can get out next year. She said, well, don't argue with him. Like, just go in there, do what you need to do. You'll be out next year. I said, no, I don't belong in there. Mm. Sign the paper. Mm. He signed the paper. He takes me to a pre-algebra class. Now, this is about two grade levels above <laughs> where I was supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. It was an AP course for students. He set me up to fail. So when he walks me into the class, the teacher comes and he said, hey, this is a new student. She said, can I see you outside? She comes outside. She says, have you taken, no, this is an algebra class. She said, have you taken pre-algebra? I said, no. She looks at him and goes, she said, are you going to be in any trouble to my students? I said, no, ma'am. She said, this is an AP class. These kids are very focused. I need you to not cause any trouble. I said, I'm going to be fine. I got an A in that class. Mm -hmm. but, but here's the caveat. When I got the A in the last day of the class, she came to me and she said, 
he set you up to fail. I said, I know he did. Mm -hmm. She said, you have to do this every time somebody does that. Mm, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's, good. that's, good. that's, good. that's, good. that's, good. that's what it means to me. For sure. That was probably one of the better answers we've ever had. For sure. Thank you. Yeah. Um, did you want to get that, this? That was powerful. That yeah. Was powerful. Okay. So really quickly. Yeah. We met, and I think I think the three of us met yeah. in uh in a mentorship that we we're a part of. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. It's interesting. the The mentorship is actually called Circle of Greatness. Yeah, right. It so, is. like, you weren't destined for greatness, but you yeah. know, you became a doctor and joined the Circle of Greatness. Yeah, and I think it's so important because what happened when we went to AP class is you got in a different room. Yeah. And you surrounded yourself with greatness. And one of the thing reasons I think that we're all so successful is because we find rooms, we find masterminds to join where everybody around us expects, not only expects greatness out of themselves, but if you're going to be in this room, I expect greatness out of you too. Yes. Right, right. So it's, I think it's very important for us all to get in rooms that make us great. And we were all able to meet in a mastermind called the Circle of Greatness. And I think that if y'all are at home and you don't have, how many people are the smartest person in their circle? Right, and be honest. I mean, they might be sitting next to you, but be honest. Um, shout out to my brother uh, Jo. He says, "If you're the if you're the smartest person in your circle, you're not in a circle. You're in a cage. Yes. Because you cannot learn. Learn. You cannot grow. So um, I think that if everybody's room wants to be successful. They have to find a circle of people that's going to expect greater from them. That's going to push them. And uh, uh, my mentor is uh, uh, it's called the Circle of Greatness, and we will have a commercial for that uh, at, at some point. But I think it's very important that we continue to get in rooms where everybody lifts, lifts us up. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, man. Yeah. Um, I can say the bigger blessing is meeting people like you in that circle. Yeah. Because it's not just the expectation that we have of each other. It's watching you do what you do. Mm -hmm. When you're in the wrong room, you can't see what's, po what's possible. Right. But when you get in the right room, you start to see impossibilities become, become possible. possible.